let's figure out where we are over here. So we are 72 turns into the game. It is currently 2000 BCE over here. So still very early in human timelines. Um, all Everything the light touches, well, everything that's in blue belongs to us. Um, there's also this district over here, this territory, which belongs to us but hasn't been attached to a city yet. We'll probably attach it to Memphis soon, which is our capital. Um, just to just to make everything nice and uniform, which will look pretty lovely. How far does this game go? I don't know. Um, there is a turn counter. I don't know if it's here. I think when I was loading it, I think it was saying something like turn 72 of something, but I'm not certain. I actually don't know what the end game is. Yeah, I don't know. And yes, of course, we have our, our lovely avatar Wondering if over you're a partner here or an impediment. with some voicing. I got my neck tattoos going on. Looks very cool. Uh, so currently, to advance to the next era, we do need a total of seven stars. We've got three in total. Um, and they're, they're continuing on. We're a builder civilization, so we can get it by building more, um, more districts. Uh, we might be able to get another, so we did get one for military, just, I think just recently, I think nine was actually the threshold, I'm not sure. If we can get up to 17, we can get another star over there. We are going to get a tech one relatively soon, because we need three more techs over there, so that's going to happen. Um, I don't think we can get more territory right now, we're a little bit hemmed in. We might be able to grow our population big enough to get another star over there, that might be the sort of thing that happens. You found out mines are mushroom lovers. Really? Like, they grew mushrooms? Now, we do a lot of mushroom growing underground um, these days. At least the mushroom farming. I wonder if they would have done that. It doesn't have to be underground. I think the advantage of underground is just, like, constant temperatures and stuff. Now, currently, there's no warfare. We've only got two people. Um, I think we are hoping. Right over here, we've got a bit of a barbarian place. The Urkulus over here. The Stephen Urkulus. So, I think the idea was we were going to move this regiment down in that direction, maybe after a little bit of healing. We've got one warrior, and we've got three of our Markabatas, Mark which are unique Egyptian units. I think with that, we can probably go ahead and hit the end turn button. I don't know, I think we have non-aggression pack with the orange people over here, do we not? Yeah, the orange people, we have a non-aggression pack, so even though they're wandering around my territory, that's not a big deal. With the... seek the greater good... With the Marbazirians over here, Currently the goth. That's the one tricky thing with this. Is we can't refer to people based on their, like, their culture, their nation. Because it changes constantly. So these guys are the goths now. But they weren't goths before. And eventually, you know, they're going to have to grow out of their goth phase. Because they're going to have to get a corporate job somewhere. And they're going to have to leave the, the, the black nail polish, you know, at home. And they'll, they'll leave something else. So we could refer to them either by their flag symbol or their color. Which won't change. Um, or, you know, that it's Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not character creation. Gra Although, I can't show it off. Currently, it is embargoed. There is avatar creation in the game um, for your look, which then once you create it, you can share it with your friends and things like that so your friends can play against you. I don't know how that works, and I can't show it to you currently. It's currently embargoed. Um, these avatars were literally created for us by the company. Um, so Amplitude made my avatar, made Mark Mazir, made a handful of other people uh, as well. Um, and these avatars are going to be voiced by those people as well. Mine is currently voiced. Uh, Marbazir's is not currently voiced here, but should be by release, fingers crossed. Unless, unless he only did Polish. Which is possible, but his content is in English, so I'm assuming they've gone to do English voices. It's not a phase, Mom, exactly. Alright, in turn. I did voice mine, yeah. When we do, um, when we do some diplomacy... You'll, you'll hear me say and things. discussion are not the pastimes of the idle, but the actions of thinkers and movers who will touch every aspect of civilization. Look at this guy running back and forth. He can't decide where he wants to go. It's probably just getting some vision or something. I don't know. Philosophy research. So we finally have access to the research quarters. So our tech rate should start to go up pretty quickly. We have a decision here. A steed for Colossus. Great art. The art in this game. Like, not only the map art. But the art for technologies and for these events as well, they're so, they're so wonderful. They really put a lot of effort into this. I mean, I, I think, like when I look at something like Endless Space, I remember when Endless Space came out, 
Um, I was really blown away by their really clean user interface, uh, great sort of aesthetic and look, and it felt fairly polished and everything like that. And Endless Legend was the same way. But I think those games were at the same time a little smaller in scope, right? So they really built on a lot of excellence, but I don't know that they had to invest tons and tons and tons and tons into all kinds of extravagant assets and things like that. And those games sold fairly well. So I, I suspect the company turned a decent profit. And for this game, I think they really decided to really invest. They, their goal here is to truly make a Civ killer, or at least a Civ challenger. Um, and I mean, it's clearly a great thing. The only thing we don't know at this point is how does the game feel after you've got 500 hours into it, right? It's a high bar. You know, a lot of a lot of big AAA games are like, man, it took me 40 hours to finish the main campaign. Wow, did I get my money's worth. Could you imagine a strategy game where you were done after 40 hours and you're like, yep, all right, I never have to touch this again. <laughs> all right. So, Stallion towering 18, 18 hands tall. Legends say the horse is untamable to all but the world's most renowned figure. The steed strains barely under control. That's two handlers. Breaking this horse in full view of your whole court would be quite the statement, but does come with the risk of humiliation. What is your will? Uh, we could try to ride it. Ride or fall, my bold acceptance of the gift will spark celebration in Thebes. So it'll give us a stability boost. Um, but it, it has a chance of triggering another event. Maybe we fall and die. Game over. I don't think it's a game over, but I suspect, it, you know, if we fall, we embarrass ourselves and we get a penalty. We could sacrifice it. We are not going to do that. I'm just telling you right now. But it would give us a discount to building units. But we're not going to do that. We could train it. Oh, under the charge of an experienced trainer, the stallion could spur... I don't know if that was meant to be a pun, but I'm taking it that way. Could spur some of our fighters to greater heights. Get a new army reinforcement next to Thebes. I'm assuming this just spawns a unit. Let's ride it. Because if something goes wrong, I'm kind of curious to see what it is. Although I like the idea of a new unit. Oh. What do we want? Grumpy. We're not Tesco, and I shall name him Tesco. Ride for science, ride it, train. More votes for ride. We're gonna go with ride. Although, I suspect the, the unit is probably the stronger choice. Getting a free military unit, I think is probably the better, like, the better kind of metagaming power, like, let's use this tempo to do something. But I really want to see what happens when we ride it. So there you go. We're going to go with that and see where it leads. Let's just pop masonry because it's only one turn away. We did kind of beeline to philosophy to be able to get the research boost. Um, so we, there was a few older texts that are a little bit behind now. Uh, can I attach this? 630, yeah. So I'm going to do that and attach the final, the final territory over here. Masonry, yeah, took no time. Stoneworks is going to help our production in a few places. Anywhere that's, like, mountainy and rocky. We're going to get a fair amount of that. Resources being sold. That's good. An idle city. So Memphis has just completed what? Ah, the Kuna. This is our unique Mayan building. We could slap down a few more. However, I'm wondering if we should spam out some research quarters first. Now, we don't have any, like, super... Oh, well, actually, there's an adjacency bonus over here. Oh, there's a lot of science up here! Yeah, okay, I like this idea. We'll lose access to food, but that's okay. I think we're gonna do this. Whoa! 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 Before mounting the horse, you stand close. Speak soothingly in its ear before turning it toward the sun so it can't see its own shadow. So it can't spook itself from seeing a shadow or, or see you getting up on top of it? That's quite cool. The stallion settles and you launch yourself up its vast flank. Sitting astride, towering over the subjects of your court, you can see the awe in their eyes. Legend. People will flock to the capital to see you ride, bringing wealth and leaving in awe. So even more stability, or more influence, which I think we're getting an influence bonus from attempting to ride in the first place. And we got Prosperous on Memphis for extra money per turn. Nice. Speaking of money... I have a crap ton of it, and we should probably... Yeah, let's purchase that. Oh, Thebes. Okay, one turn away. 
Um, it's only two turns. I think I'll save the rest of the money here. We'll see what else we're going to boost. Um, maybe we'll balance our pops. The th problem is, with the balance, is that it doesn't guarantee that it makes enough food. Actually, even... Oh, shit, you can go more than five. Even with the uh, growth focus, it's actually losing food right now. But that might just be an incentive to make more pops. Wait, what? Oh, okay. This just over overwrites whatever they... Oh! Wait, what? Oh! Okay. Okay. That's really cool. That's extremely cool. I mean, I can always just drag people wherever I want. Now... I don't know... It, maybe this guy's always here, because it'd be nice if there's like a lock icon or something. Oh, I literally don't have room for more farmers. I think I, if I built more farmers districts, then more farmers could be assigned. Aha. Uh -huh. But I think even if I go and do... You know, yeah, like this or whatever, I mean, then I can still manually assign people whatever. I think we're going to go with um, technology subsidies. Or no. Okay, I'll just do expert policy then. We want food into science maybe, into production, into money. I like it. Each pop eats each food plus extra. Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to start pumping out units at some point again, which will lower our population, but... Okay, we'll still work on the research quarters, that's fine. Um, I would like to do the sea stuff. It is cheap over here for sailing, but organized warfare... Oh, we need this to be able to do reinforcements. Let's take organized warfare. Yeah, Memphis population just dropped. Maybe we'll have to build some more farmer's quarters, or maybe... Yeah, no farmer's quarters, I guess. Oh, that's right! Orange wanted to talk. There was a little dot, 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 which I ignored. Aww. It's interesting that it doesn't, um, didn't prompt me to go and deal with that. Okay, we have these barbarians over here are Utnaboot. We have more strength, and we will be able to place some units on the high ground here. I think I'm going to take this. What I'm going to do is move the warrior to block that section. Over this way. Uh -huh. Get these guys on the high ground, and they can move over here as well to take some shots. Off we go. Off we go. Come over here. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's like annoyingly a penalty for doing range combat from a river too. What I want to do is shoot their archer. No line of sight. When I get over here, I'll be on the river. It'll be like the same penalty. Is it minus four? It's minus three for the river, so it's less bad. Oh, I can't actually get that far. Strike first! Strike hard! Attack! No fear! You can't shoot anymore. Oh, are you still animating? Might have to change those times a little bit. Yeah, okay. You can't fire again, but I can tell you to stop. You're completely done. Yeah, you can't fire again, so I'll tell you to stop. This guy here, all I'm gonna do... Actually, I guess I can go here. Which would be better, because we wouldn't be on a river, and we'd get slightly higher ground. But I don't think they can attack up the cliffs, other than the archers. So I'm gonna pull back to right here. And just go to defend mode. I have the high ground. It's over, barbarians! I have the high ground. But this guy might get hit by a lot of arrows. I guess there's only one archer left, so... Alright. This guy's gonna get hit by a few units, though. 
high ground bonus should hopefully keep him alive. I think I should still try to finish the archers. Hopefully, we'll have some extra shots to, you know, do more damage to these guys. Unless I pull back further here. I don't know if the, um... I don't know if these guys have area of, uh, zone of controls. Do all units have zone of control? It'd be nice if it's, like, if specified somewhere. You do have move and fire. I can pull back. We could just do a big retreating action. It's possible I can double tap the archers and then do a little damage over here. Yeah, maybe we have to kill the chariots, especially with their teaming up thing. This further one's weaker. I wonder if I get line of sight from here. How do we figure line of sight? Because we don't have line of sight here. We're higher, but maybe there's this. Maybe it's the terrain. I just wonder if I moved here if I'd have line of sight. But I guess there's no... It looks like the height is just high ground. is just high ground. So let me move here. No, we still have uh, no line of sight. I don't know what determines... site here? Wow! But I do here. So this is blocking it. Maybe it's the unit? Could be. It would be very useful to be able to figure this out so that we could plan our combat placement better. Of course, it's such a easier to see when you turn off paper graphics. Uh, maybe that's what's going on. I think... I think I'm going to shoot this guy, because this archer, I assume, is going to shoot me over here, and I, I'm more l likely to... I think we're going to be okay with that. So I think I'm going to weaken this chariot anyway. I was thinking about moving off the river. Maybe I guess I could have moved here and then shot. Maybe that would have been better. Alright, so you can't shoot again. I just have to verify that the archers are actually all done. Oh, you could actually go ahead and do a thing, but I think that would be poor. I think the better thing to do is just to defend with the warrior. You are done as well, so we're going to do that. Okay, that worked out fine. I'd love to hit auto right now, just because it's like, well, it's trivial now to end it. Except, <laughs> there's a good chance they'll just go and, like, attack in the wrong order and I'll lose this guy. Did you survive with 1 HP? Of course you did. this guy. I think I'm just going to kill the chariot, even though it's annoying. Let's go! It looks like they have zone of control. I want to make sure... I don't want him to go up and shoot this guy, but I don't know if there's a way to stop that. I think I will move over here. Just to discourage him from doing anything, but I can't really do anything else. You fired. Done. It's because of the hit and run, right? Normally after you shoot, your turn's over. <gasps> oh, he didn't kill the warrior. Oh, God. Because that, that was my fear right there, is that he was going to shoot the warrior. I guess I should have moved the warrior back. I was thinking, I, because, okay, if I had moved this guy first, I would have thought about moving the warrior back. But at the time, I thought, well, I can't necessarily escape him, but Negative. clearly I should have thought more. Um... Can I take an action? Or, ah, oh, it's next. Next turn. Okay. Because I think you only get five combat rounds, and then it carries over next turn. You have a lot of production queued up. Food is currently okay. You don't have a huge excess. 
I think that harbor is going too, which might be nice. Like, <laughs> it's like, you want to build a harbor here, right? Well, no. Three combat rounds. Did it used to be five? I feel like it might have used to have been five, but I might be wrong. What would be great is if it told you how much of a benefit this was giving you now. So it'd have to be like, okay, hold on. How much of our ground that we're currently taking advantage of is mountain, rocky, or stony? And I think the answer is mostly not much right now. That's a forest. That's a stony field. So this is exploiting a stony field. So I think this would just give us one production right now. It's hard to tell. Forest. I think the thing to do is to build another district. You have enough stability, theoretically, that you should hopefully be okay. Um, I would like to build more research quarters. Harbor and Lake, what are we, Switzerland? Right? We can get a lot more production, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think... It's either that maybe our farmer's market. I'm the research quarter. Ooh, apparently we can get some good adjacent... Oh, right, because the horse, the strategic units and things like that. And the horse is giving bonuses to adjacent research districts. We'll lose a little bit of food, but gain some science. Which I think we do need right now. Alright, organized warfare. So this means if we... If with reinforcements, if we have more than one army adjacent to combat or in the combat zone, then more than one army can participate. Which is really nice, you can start stacking things. Battering ram sound fun. I got a scientist star, good. Assyrians kept their tradition, so the Assyrians stayed Assyrian. Interesting. Some people are always asking about that, and the answer is, yeah, you can totally do that. We're losing food. I'm gonna build the animal barns, because we do have food in our empire. We actually have two horses. So, hold on, Memphis has the animal barns. Can we find out? Okay, that does answer the question. So while Memphis itself does not have um, horses, it has gems, but no horses, but our empire has horses, we have two of them, and in fact, Memphis is getting five food times two from the animal barns. So that is working the way we were sort of hoping it would. So that's really good for us. We still have a huge food deficit in Memphis. So a farmer's quarter over here will give us, will fix that. It also let us run an extra farmer. But just having the farmer's quarters is going to help alleviate that problem. Thebes doesn't have a ton of excess food. But we could consider stacking more research. That's quite nice. Um, and then, um, at some point, if we end up with the researchers, we can run the school. <laughs> or the House of Scribes. What's the school? Okay, both of them just add more science there. Um, because we are at a farmer limit and we only have one excess food, I think I've got to build a farmer's quarters. I think I might build it here. In fact, here. Yeah. Not a ton of food. The bonuses you get across the ages remain as you progress through eras. Whenever, um, so some things stay and some things don't. So if we go back to our Egyptian phase, um, we get, so I mean, we still have our pyramids. We can't build more, but we still have them. We can still, I think, build Markabadas. And something about here, is it the affinity bonus where we can set cities into land raiser? Or is it Affinity Bonus Pride Stability? We get to keep something. Where's the Grand Planner that we get to keep? It's the Grand Planner that we get to keep over here. There it is. So plus one industry on tiles to produce industry and a discount to district cost. So we get to keep that. And then from the Mayans, we're going to get to keep plus two industry per workers. So we've got a lot of production. There it is. Like there, there's somewhere. So some things stay and some things don't. And I think that's really interesting because it adds, there's there's a lot of strategic choice to the empires you pick. But at the same time, it's not, if you don't pick this, you know, you've crippled yourself because it's only one, one thing of the empire stays forever. So sh there's, there's all sorts of short-term um, things that have an impact. 
I think I want hydrology just for a further boost of food on the rivers because food seems to be a big problem for us. Oh yeah, and the aqueduct upgrade for stability is going to be important too. <laughs> Build like an Egyptian. Remember when I used to be able to play copyrighted music before streams? Oh. It's fun. I mean, technically speaking, all music is copyrighted. But... All together. Before, like, big DMCA crackdown stuff. I wish we could pay, like, I could pay, like, a Twitch license. Like, I don't know what would be appropriate, but it'd probably be quite a bit that I would be willing to pay to just be able to, like, play any old song from Spotify or whatever. Get some 70s rock on us again, or 80s pop. People, obviously musicians, you know, deserve to get paid for their, their work. But it would be nice if there was a way to do that. That wasn't just, now your channel's shut down. Like, bastards! I've never had an issue with it, but other people have. Alright, so these are peaceful barbarians. If there is such a thing. Okay, we're up to seven food right now. Feeling good about that. Wouldn't mind continuing to slap down research quarters. Even if we don't assign people to research role, it still gives us more science. Like, 13 extra science. What's our science rate? 120 right now. So we'd be increasing our science output by 10% by building a research quarter, which takes us two turns to do. In large part because we have so many people assigned to industry. But then it also will give us more cap to our science jobs. We can shift people over. What's interesting with balanced is like the order. So it's it as you switch these policies, it does change the order of these symbols. But clearly, they also affect the weight that things get assigned here. What I would like is balanced, but make sure my people don't starve. Where's the setting for that? Because I don't necessarily need this much industry. Definitely don't want that. Public controls actually seems reasonable. Actually, maybe public controls is what I want. Make sure people follow your grand plan. Food, then the... Okay, hold on. So yes, equal, food and industry, then the rest. Technology subsidy... Yeah, public control seems great. Is we wait food first and then balance everything else out. Now, maybe we don't need as much money. Now, when I do expert policy, which is obviously just use my own, it would be nice to do a similar thing. Well, shit, the base industry is really good. Maybe we don't need the workers. It sort of depends on, like, these secondary buildings over here. Yeah, well, we got the expert policy in drag and drop, but... Maybe that's fine. Fill every science job you can, and then go to industry. Because what I kind of want is enough food so that we've got positive number. And honestly, like, balance between industry and science would be nice. But they don't really... That's not an option. The closest is public control, which is enough food to make sure we don't starve, and then balance between all three. Which I guess is fine, but the, I don't value the money as much. Drag icons, not pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are doing this like two seconds ago, Theron. We are doing this like three seconds ago. It's great. I got very excited until I realized it's not doing exactly what I want. Because I, I want to I wanna balance these two. I want food, then I want these two here to be balanced. And then money last. And yeah, I could I could set to um, yeah I could set to this and then move the population out. Yeah. And I guess it's gonna keep this until the pop grows and it'll probably put it back in the money. And that might be fine. I mean, some micro is of course totally reasonable. I'm just trying to find that um, that Goldilocks zone. Where can I set it where it's just just right? And I guess for now, that's going to be it. The other thing I would still like is if... Um... Oh, I guess I don't have any outposts anymore. So it is only going to cycle between cities. I was going to say, it'd be nice if... like, Because normally if you cycle, it also selects outposts. It'd be nice if you hold shift or something and it only you know, only goes to cities. But I guess that's a moot point now, which is nice. So yeah, I guess the same thing. Public control and then probably go and just move these guys out like that. 
public control and do something kind of like this. I mean, some of the places have the buildings for... See, this is the, you're getting a lot more industry per workers than the science, although a lot of that is because of our nations. Plural. So maybe I want to wait it there, but, you know, as long as we're feeling like things are building quickly enough. Okay. I think I like this. I like public control and then maybe move things out of money, as long as we're making money okay. And I think that might be the minimal... Um, amount of micromanagement. I like the fact that public control, it's not just in order. It's food and then balances the others. It does It does minimize how much micro have to do. And having some people in money is fine because money is quite good. Although right now our production rate is so good. Our production rate is so good. Because we have a lot of passive strength. We built up quite a few of the maker's quarters. Like, the, just the base value is so good. Maybe I should. Just not technology subsidies. I guess they don't... I guess it, this would be where our expert policy works. Like, just food into science. And does it remember... Is it the same expert policy everywhere? There you go. And you don't have enough scientist jobs, so the extra goes into industry. Because then I can use the money to boost anywhere where things are being a little bit slow. But one turn, one turn. Three turns isn't bad. Hmm. Banana Kamana, thank you very much for your contribution to the uh, Bourbon and Banana Fund. Uh, hey, Quilt, loving humankind. Just want to tell everyone that the word none is just the letter N doing a cartwheel. Oh my god! It is the letter N doing a cartwheel. That's amazing! I'd never heard that before. That's great. Alter control click the icon. That's a good point. I mean, it doesn't say anything in the tooltip. Yeah, it'd sort of be nice if like if it like stacked, but there there's a limit to how many UI thingamabobs can be going on. Let's be honest. The UI in this game is ten times better than UI in Civ. The problem is sometimes when like stuff gets added, you're like, oh, you know what the next logical step is? It's this. People are never satisfied, but, you know, should never be satisfied. I heard about that in, uh, something about Hamilton. Mirror stars! The thing is, we could probably just power through these scientist stars at this point. Which is interesting, because we're not playing, we haven't played any science civs. Okay, food is positive now in Memphis, which is great, although it did recently lose some population. I would like to build all of the unique districts so we can. So you can have one per territory. So we might go into that. On the other hand, we now have a crap ton of scientists. So it might be very valuable. Ooh, okay, our stability is dropping quickly. We might want to build a public fountain first to stabilize that. But building the schools in the House of Scribes might be really good because we have so many scientists that if we buff the scientists, that's quite good. But I think I'll build a public fountain first just to make sure things don't go too cray-cray. Oh, here too. We're heading towards 35% stability. So, I'm sorry, do we already have the public fountain and everything built? We must. Yeah, right here. Huh. Okay, stability here might be a bit of a thing. We can get stability by building garrisons, though. Because if as we build districts, every district lowers your stability. Because you're sort of, the city's getting bigger, it's being harder to manage. We played City Skylines, we know how it works. Um, so I could drop some garrisons, which might not be a terrible idea. Now, with the garrison, that's actually something I'm not 100% sure. So garrison gives strength to those. It does give us more fortification, combat strength for combat adjacent. So I can pretty much, I think I can put it anywhere. So you can have it on, like, your front lines. Well, I, apparently I can't build it here. Oh, we don't have vision there. What if I moved a unit here and I had a bit... But still, like, this tile here only has one base food. It's far away from everything, so it's unlikely to be improved anytime soon. So I'm wondering if we just slap it down there. Units give stability when garrison the city. Okay. So what I could do is I could train a unit, which would drop my, my population a little bit, and just leave it parked in the city. How do we want to handle our stability situation? 
What's the best way? I mean, the garrison, I mean, other than two turns of production, doesn't really cost us anything. Doesn't tie up any units. I'm getting a new stability building in a turn. Oh, right, because our upgrade to the water, the um, the aqueduct, which upgrades our, uh, our fountain. Tell you what, we're going to go ahead, we're just going to slap down the pod reload shop. It takes a turn, and then we'll come back. We need copper. We don't have the access to copper anywhere. All right, aqueducts go. I could spend the money as well. It would be all of our money. So no, I'd rather I'd rather keep a nest egg over here. I mean, you guys know. Usually, I'm like, well, if I've got money in the treasury, I want to spend it. Um, but three turns isn't that bad. What did hydrology do? Hold on, we'll uh, we'll pop it up over here. So hydrology, uh, underpinning important advances in civil engineering. Hydrology offers basic theories regarding the flow of water and water cycle. So it gave us three things. It gave us access to artificial reservoirs, which uh, levels up our irrigation, which gives us more food on rivers. We already had some, but this, this is an upgraded version. Water mill gives us industry on rivers, and then the aqueduct gives us stability, upgrading our fountain. I'll just, um, wait, we'll grab a bunch of these cheap things. Military camps, stone walls, citizen. Cheap and readily available. Yeah, we're probably not going to do that. Standing army iron? Is it reveal iron? Yeah, let me pop standing army here. Could this be iron? A lot of people thought it was going to be uranium. But could it be iron? Mmm. Oh, is that coffee? Ooh. Ooh, how exciting. Ooh. -hoo. All right, um, I can wait on the aqueduct actually, because our stability in Memphis is all right. So I think what we might do is get ourselves a school and house of scribes so that the scientists we have get a boost to their productivity. Same thing over here. We just finished another research quarter. We don't actually have the population to fill it right now. Oh, new civic slaves! Hooray! I like how... <laughs> I don't like this. It's interesting how the option isn't whether or not to have slaves. The question is, where do we get our slaves? Remember how happy you were a few turns ago going to 20 to 50 signs? Yeah, our signs is scale up like crazy. Happens fast. On common quarters? I don't have common quarters. So we get more... We get free population from ransacking. I don't know if we're going to be doing any ransacking anytime soon. But maybe. I guess I couldn't, yeah, not click it. If we don't click it, does that mean we have no slaves? We certainly have a few more options to do as well. I want more influence over here. Yes, if you do, if you don't click it, you won't have slaves. Oh, okay. Well, let's not click it. You want to be open-minded? Influence on territories, territories follow slate religion. Or just more faith. Religious hostilities. Get grievances against empires. I mean... Open your mind. Yeah, let's let's open our minds. It all sounds well and good until they start worshipping delivery services and bank accounts. Hey man, don't take my skip the dishes away. We rely on that. Collectivism for industry. Procession. Spend money to increase stability in the city. Oh, that sounds useful. Gathering, sharing, forming a community. I don't know if that's just Might I recommend like throwing in a few feasts as well? Wait for this game is killing you. Yeah. It's quite spiffy, and I can't wait to, like, I can't wait for you guys to start playing this game more so that you can tell me how to play. 
it's gonna be really useful. I'm just gonna pop sailing now because it's so cheap. Let's just like burn through these cheapies. Yeah, tech rate has gone bonkers. Cause yeah, we were at something like 20 and we had a, like a, an option, a choice that we're giving us an extra 30 science for 10 turns. So we went from 20 to 50, it was insane. Now we're over 200. Oh, these units have upgrades. Oh, if we had freaking iron. Grr. Oh, you don't need iron. Noble javelineers. What's your difference? 25 attack, 6 move, 3 range. 25 attack, 4 move, 3 range. Poison! Applies the poison status to the target, reduces its movement, speed, and attack range. You can trade for iron. It's a great question. Where have you been? Where have you been? You have created your first trade link. I could also buy horses Commerce for even more how food. empires have always shared goods, resources, and tall tales. All those of honest intent may have my ear. So, okay, if I have Papyrus, plus four on all stabilities, more science. I should be doing this a lot more. That's what I should be spending my money on. Okay, I already have gemstones. I already had Papyrus. Or Papyrus. Does it stack? Wait. You must exploit... Oh, that's if you have the Wondrous Effect. If you have two of four deposits and research patronage. Yes, they stack. Thanks, Sten. It's a good way to get our stability boosts. And, like, if I import gemstones, they're going to pay for themselves after a while. Well, I don't have any market quarters, actually. Bonus food for farmers. Yeah, let's get more coffee. Food and stability for salt. It does say per salt there. Yeah, per obsidian. It's percentage industry. I know, right? I am sexy. You're right. Look at that guy. Okay, let me stop. This oh, I still have a fair amount of cash. Should I just be importing everything? They, it seems pretty strong. I'm thinking importing everything makes a lot of sense. Oh, and you get trade income as well? Oh yeah, so if it passes through provinces and things, right? You have a lot of obsidian. So, I mean... Oh, no known paths back to my cities. Oh, people are already buying those. I see. Okay. Oh shit, I don't know. Let's just buy everything. Oh, cannot afford. Okay, we're out of money. Well, not out of money, but... Yeah, desiccated whale vomit. Ambergris always makes me think of the uh, Bob's Burgers episode. Where the kids find a uh, chunk of it. It's really funny. Most episodes of Bob, Bob's Burgers are really funny. So, I have iron. So, do we upgrade our Markabatas to these? We don't have as good movement, but otherwise the damage output is exactly the same. We lose the ability to move and fire, but we get poison. Maybe? It, it doesn't feel like a 
tremendous upgrade, but it does feel like an upgrade. Don't upgrade them all. You can. Oh, are the, is this the, un, the mine unique? Yeah. Okay, maybe we'll get two. So we can keep one of these for extra movement. And a couple of poisoners. It's weird that it wouldn't let me, like, just still click it and move towards it. So we still don't have copper. No one's got copper. We're gonna have to meet more people, um, is I think the situation. Okay, so we have empty work slots, so we don't have to rush to build new districts. Um, although they can do good things. Although, except we might want to get the kunaz still up before we change um, eras. And actually, that's a pretty good location here. So yeah, we'll get, we'll keep working on our unique districts. So over here, okay, you have no more slots for farmers or scientists. So we could consider building more of that, but it might be a good idea to just go ahead and get some of these basic buildings out. We could even consider building some units too. We can build swordsmans. But just more food, more better? Mm, I don't know. Sailing to explore. Yeah, so I think we have to build a harbor first and then we build ships, right? Yeah. You know what? Let's get a harbor. So, ah, here we go. We've actually got a decent harbor location over here. Lot, the other city we looked at wasn't as good. Okay. So at least they gave us the trade gave us something really good to do with all of our money, which is nice to see. Knowledge authorities. Who has the biggest influence on your empire's knowledge? Clearly, the answer is random dumbass YouTubers. That's where I get all my information. Bonus science per researcher on a city outpost. Bonus science per number of trade routes. Well, I think we're going to go per researcher because I think we're going to run a lot of researchers. Elders Wisdom as opposed to Frankie Innovations. We don't care about the rules of acquisition. Yeah, we're going to go over here. It will put us back towards tradition, but that's not necessarily so bad because we can use some stability. Mmm. Four innovations would be like, yeah, YouTubers and Twitch people. Yeah, that makes sense. Per number of trade routes. I mean, we have opened up a lot of trade, apparently. I have to assume this would do more science for us, but I'm actually not sure. Now... Ultimately, moving towards progress is nice for the pure science outpost output, but being in the middle is nice for stability. I think I'm going to go Elder's Learning Wisdom. It's important to know where you're going, but it's good to remember where you came from. Okay there, uh, Uncle Ira. Less, less interesting Uncle Ira. Trade expeditions research. So, levy administration, just some flat money on the main plaza, and our transport galley tech as well. God, this, this is such a gorgeous tech tree. Oh, ah. We got another science star. Wow, we're just burning through those. So we need another five techs for our third and final science star, which should be our seventh for the era, or we might hit something else before then. But actually, at this point, I think we might just do the science stars. Oh, they have another army over there. No doubt right. this independent people possess sophisticated customs, rights, language, and beliefs. I do hope you're going to treat them well. That's such an overall... I probably could have done just, like, the auto-resolve. I do hope you're going to treat them well. Yeah. I'm sure that's going to work out fine. So these two both have a veteran star. You can hold the choke point. If these guys retreat back, it might be a little annoying, but... They did, but I can still hit this guy. I can't? Don't I have a range of three? One, two, three. Huh. Go this way. I thought the upgrade. For some reason, I thought they had the exact same range. Yeah, these javelineers only have a range of two. They're much worse. I thought they had the same damage, the same range. I 
you have no movement left? Guys, can I un-upgrade them? What the hell is this shit? Interesting. So in Civ 6, this mountain would not count as being in the way. Hmm. Why does everything survive with 1 HP all the time? I'm worried if I move forward here, this guy's going to take too much damage and die to this guy. Because even if I move this dude forward, apparently this mountain is going to stop us from shooting here. Ugh. Listen, I'm just going to go and uh, defend over here. So yeah, you've already gone. You definitely are out of range. You apparently don't have a line of sight. This is a good defensive location, though. I will give him this guy. Fucking hell. I might just have to retreat back here, because... So if I move here... I can shoot this guy. Poison attack, yep. Go! All right, well, at least he's gonna be weak enough that he shouldn't be able to do any damage to us. Well, he, uh, sorry, he won't be able to kill us. He can do damage, but not kill us. Wow. All right. Well, we learned a couple things. A, those units are shit. B, mountains are a lot more dangerous in this game than Civ 5. Or, well, Civ 5 and 6. And I think in, uh, I'm trying to think, like, another hex game I played, like Gloomhaven. I think that would be another example of where the line of sight would be okay. That's a board game. Well, it's also got a digital version. Because in that, the rule is, as long as you can go from one, one point of a hex to another point of a hex without interruption. But here, the midline was being blocked. Hmm. Patch notes, remove one max HP from all units. Oh, that would be nice. Um, okay. So we could use extra job slots if we want. We've got tons of food, so we don't have to do that. We could do some extra science. Uh, this is somewhere I'd look for the harbor before, but... Wait, I literally cannot build a harbor any, in any of these tiles? Coastal waters, this is just raw ocean. It's just ocean, it's not coastal waters. It's just hardcore cliffs. Huh. All right, well, I guess we're not building harbors. Sure, fine. Um, we'll probably go ahead and just build a bunch of these little buildings over here. Uh, I like the idea of the House of Scribes. Um, your stability's okay right now. You just get some... Well, you don't have a river, so the artificial reservoir doesn't do anything. The water mill doesn't do anything. Stoneworks, we don't think, does very much. We might want to get some fortifications. I guess I could build a levee for just a little extra cash, because why not? I don't know, maybe I start pumping out some swordmen or something. Well, we'll see. Got that in the queue anyway. 
Um, I'm just gonna keep getting cheap tech, especially since it'll get us our last Your airstrike. first harbor gives access to endless expanses of the vast blue seas, great voyages and discoveries. Should have done this ages ago. Yeah, yeah I can build in the lake, but yeah, I don't Greeks. know if that's... I any point would be more afraid now, of their wit and their words than of their troops. Oh, we met the Greeks! Things change, even leaders and empires. I have a proposal for you. And you want an aggression pack? You must consider this. I must consider this. I will accept. Yes, I cannot dispute the benefit in that. Oh, the voice acting in this game is so good! Crisis. Wait, what? First of all, I was the patron of the Stephen Urkels? Secondly, the Greeks stole it? That's how we met them? I was about to go and beat their ass in! The independent people. Yeah, just sitting here kicking their ass. Huh. Well, I want to go to war with someone, although I wanted some more proper units soon. Violence has temporarily halted your purchase from the Nubians. Wait. What happened with the Nubians? Are you wine or are you vinegar? I don't know. Maybe both, because I want some for my salad and one for my drink. Apparently she's oppressing my people. Help, help, I'm being oppressed. Well. Alright. Move over here and heal. Alright, there's still good job slots. Um, these are pretty good, because you do have a river. It'd be nice if, yeah, if doing this, if we could get, if it would highlight every tile or something that would meet this criteria, so it'd be easy to tell at a glance whether it'd be good. I mean, the river's easy to tell, so it's like, yeah, I'll build a watermelon. Sure. We got a lot of research. We'll keep up a school in here as well. Um, but the stoneworks, unless I'm going around mousing over all these tiles, woodlands... Okay, Rocky Fields, Rocky Fields. I think the stonework's quite good for Memphis here. We've got some for us, so I guess I'll queue up the lumber yard as well. I can drop my grievance to resume trade. Yeah, but do I want to? No, maybe. I guess so. This one here? If I'm going to go to war with anyone, it might be the Greeks. F those Greeks! I don't think Archer can retaliate and attack and Javelins can. Oh, mm. All right. Oh, it's not worth worrying about. Voice acting! So... The state of my nails is more worrying. Okay. So it didn't cancel our trade deals. It just put a halt on them. That's quite cool. can't afford. Why is it so expensive? We have 400 bucks. Oh, yeah. We've got coast access, so now I can build Penta Contour. Oh, 50 oarsmen. I'm like, Penta is like, like 5, but okay, it's 50. So, I'm going to build one so we can explore the coast. <sighs> Map of the heavens! The Empire's achievement... In the sciences is already a matter of great pride. Now, a bright, industrious woman hailing from the Empire's most renowned center of learning, Thebes, has presented you with an atlas of the heavens, dividing the stars into constellations. Their wheeling nature, once the domain of the gods alone, now approaches human comprehension. How should it be used? We can militarize, get eagle-eyed on four units for ten turns for vision range. And who cares about that? Or educate! With adequate funding, a work like this could inspire a generation of artists and thinkers. Science investing in three cities. So it's a little bit more science, the cost of money. It's not tremendous, but it's going to be more useful, I think, than the vision. Yes, I can play against my avatar. It can be in we did that actually in the beta. It was a, a quill free-for-all. Quill versus quill versus quill. So, I think... Oh, wow. Cheaper trades. Plus one city cap. Actually, my city cap is fine. I'm going to just grab the cheapest tech. And that'll... I think that's the last one we need for the next star. 
Actually, we just got our Steet Star. Or, we're about to. New grievances. With whom? With purple. You have my ear. Tell me what you wish to discuss. Yeah, give me... But give me the Urkels. I guess we got a couple of different ones for that. Return what is ours, or your safety cannot be guaranteed. Safety cannot be guaranteed. Eh, it'd be a shame if something happened to this lovely little town of yours. We'll spread pacifism to Greeks, right? I, I should get the building units here. Um, I don't remember. Did they... Was there an auto-explore mode? Oh shit, there's stuff at sea to visit. Apparently, there's something ransackable? Well, probably somewhere, but... Yeah, curiosities. Ready all row. A wreck. Oh, science and, uh... Influence. Can I... Okay, all the wonders have been claimed. I was going to say. But if I go up an era, which is going to happen soon, I should have enough points to claim a wonder soon. Okay, I think we're going to start pumping out military units. And I think, like, war is on the horizon. Oh, I don't have iron. Who was I trading iron with? Or did I... Am I using it up? Plus one from Nubians. Is the one swordman... Like, I upgraded a warrior to a swordman. I wonder if that's what's tying up this guy. Hmm. We'll build a couple more javelineers here. We're going to want to pair that with some melee after. Pirates are stealing your iron trade. Really? Or are you just saying that? Oh! Ooh, okay. So, don't spend too long at deep sea. Also, God, the water looks gorgeous here. At the catch. Trade routes can be interrupted. Ready all, bro. Hang on. We're gonna rank up, but what are the, the Greeks? Have you come to shame yourself once more? I kinda just want to declare war. We're about to get access to some new a new unique unit. Normally, I try to be a pacifist, but not this time. He said the word! He said the word! My instinct said, don't trust them. It was right, as always. You notice that that line didn't match the text? It's because <laughs> made a little creative choice during the voice acting sessions. I think the only... I'm not even sure about that. I was going to say, the only thing I didn't fit in was the was a Brussels sprout reference, but no. We did get in a Brussels sprout reference. I just don't remember where. It's in there somewhere. But we record something like 700 lines of dialogue. So one of them references Brussels sprouts. Conquest. Well, that sounds very appropriate. Oh, yeah. Choose now. All right, who do we want to be? Well, we go from Maya to Aztecs, which is sort of, you know, physically appropriate. But of course, we went from Egyptian to Mayan, so I feel like we should just, you know, ignore all that. It would give us Jaguar Warriors, which could be nice, especially since hopefully they don't use any resources. We do need to find the heavy infantry tech to get to build them, but hopefully that's not too far away. The Byzantines... I mean, I'm playing the Byzantines in Civ right now, so I don't know. Although the Varangian Lords have a strength of 43. Also need heavy industry. They also need two iron. So that seems less than great because we don't really have access to iron right now. The Franks over here need horses and iron to build uh, the Milites, the French Knigets. So I I'm mostly just because I'm, we're, we're going to war, I'm thinking in terms of military here. They all have great stuff going on over here, but I kind of want to look at the military units. The Ghanians have Maharists, which only need the chivalry tech. No resources. It's mounted camels. Who doesn't love camels? 35 strength, really good movement rate. That's tempting. That's tempting. The Teutons 
Tonic Knights. Yeah, we don't have iron. The com Oops. Whoa. Okay. Well, slow down. I want to scroll down here. Um, the Khmer have elephants, but we don't have the resources for that. The English. Silly English Knigets. We could unlock longbows, which actually range four. That's pretty good. Or for something unexpected, the Mongols. These units don't have a ton of oomph, but they can multi-move and things. The Umads over here, which needs a lot of horses, we don't have. The Norsemen, which have their long ships, but I don't think that's going to be useful for us. Again, I'm only thinking short term. And then we're back around over here. So in terms of just pure unit stuff, the Jaguar Warriors might be nice. Or the English. Or maybe the Mongols. What is the Mongol thing? Oh yeah, but the Mongols needed uh, horses. Oh, they... Okay, they do need horses, which we do have. The orders are cool. A lot of votes for the English and the Mongol secondary. I don't know. I think I, the range four longbows, this is going to be brutal. So what else we get? Surf labor plus seven food per number of attached territories. Cool. Stronghold. Increase the range two for range units standing on it. Counts as farmer's quarters. Oh, interesting. And gives stability boost. Oh, they don't even need clear line of sight. They can shoot over mountains? We're English now. We're English now. And yeah, we'll be able to upgrade to these units pretty quick. We need the war summons technology, which we will beeline. Whatever you think of the agrarian English, don't complain about their cooking. They'll come after you with their longbowmen. <laughs> okay. Tech. We need War Summons. Right here. Beelining War Summons. Okay. Oh, yes, and we can claim a wonder. We got a new era. What are the, uh, what are the English thing? They're agrarian, so have high population for extra stars. Wonder. So we can get the Angkor. What? So food. The Forbidden City. More support when we go to war. Or the Todaiji. Faith stability. Plus 20% turns before being converted by another religion. No Petra yet. Sorry. Forbidden? Everyone, most people want Forbidden. I think that's cool. I like that idea. Let's do that. Claimed. Alright. Oh. No. Because we don't have open borders. Oh, right. Yeah, I need the text still. We can start building the Forbidden City right away, but I think maybe units. Um, and then they can be ready to upgrade. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out a couple more warriors. Because we don't have a lot of melee to tank for our range. Yeah, there was another inspiration somewhere. Is it here? Okay, hold on. I still want to do this just to push forward as much as possible. I feel like it was over here. Landscape sucks. Apparently. 
I mean, he's gonna be able to shoot from here regardless. Wait, hold on. Why can he shoot over the mountains? Because this guy, we were here, we were able to shoot, couldn't we? No, when, when this guy was here, he could shoot there. These two are on even ground. My Markabata here could shoot. My Javelinier here could not. It doesn't say that he can indirect fire. I mean, was I misremembering? No, I'm pretty sure the Markabata was hitting the guy who was standing here every time. Tooltip's not yet updated. Javelins need direct line of sight, Markabatas don't. So it's not a trait, there'd be something something in the tooltip. So the Javelins just work differently. Someone was saying something they counterattack as well, whereas the um, Markabatas don't. So the Javelineers are more of like a hybrid melee unit. Is that it? Might be more the way to think of it. Anyway, I think our placement's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so there's gonna be some tooltip change to the Javelineers to explain that they need a direct line. Where's the Markabatas? No, no. Either the Markabatas have an extra ability, or, you know, it's implied that they can do indirect fire that's not here. That might be it. The Markabatas might just be like the Longbowmen in that they have the indirect fire thing, but it's not showing up. And it could just be that Javelineers are normal. I wonder if I could have baited them forward. I, I doubt it, though. So we can just keep plunking away here. Yeah, javelins are... Yeah, I know, well... Really, no one's gonna bow over a mountain. No fear! And I can always pull back this guy after, same as we did before. This battle's gonna be fine. Oh, he's got level 2 veterancy now. Nice. Oh, they had another unit back there! Ooh! Alright, that's a little scarier. time, I moved up here and I wasn't able to shoot. Why is that? They have a movement of four. They don't have move and attack. Yeah, but again... Markabatas don't have anything special. What they have is they can move after attacking. So is this is just another like tooltip that's not correct. Yes. It's not the range number. People keep obsessing about that. Okay, this time I was able to move and shoot. Maybe you know, maybe he was further away. Maybe there's something else going on. I don't know. Maybe I'm just misremembering. Took a lot of damage, as expected. But that was alright. Oh, man. Battle next turn. Okay. So, what city has the lowest stability? They're all kind of the same ish. I mean, I guess it would sort of be here. We'd start the Forbidden Palace for Thebes. Um, let me get 
the library for science rate. I mean, it's hard it's hard to argue about science. Science is pretty good. Wait, library is just science per population, period. Not scientist per not science per scientist. Okay, that seems exceptionally good. Huh? This this is something you need to see. It may be difficult to stomach. So the dialogue is all keyed. When we were doing it, they were explaining, like, the game keeps track of, like, okay, this is someone who, you know, you used to like, but you don't anymore. Um, but the offer seems good because of game balance reasons. This is what's going to trigger this particular line of dialogue. It's it's really interesting. It's not just a random pool of responses. Is They really are weighted to what relationship you currently have, what relationship you used to have, did you get betrayed in the past, all these things like that. I think Alliance seems... Okay. It would be good to have a friend. The Nubians are right next to us. They would sort of be a natural target, but at the same time, the um, the Goths, if they're still Goths now, um, are another viable target. So I'm going to say yes. Because we're, we're currently busy at war, so... Fascinating, you the Persians. Let's they probably just stopped over. There is some merit. Oh, are they Persians now? It's just as Nubians. Oh, maybe we just, we just met someone. That's what happened. Okay. Why do we have a dot dot dot? If you seek the greater good, then I would know you better. I'm repressing my people, which is hurting our trade. I'm gonna announce this so our trade keeps going. A mere now. indiscretion. I have a proposal. You would like a non aggression pact. This is acceptable to me for now. You want a cultural agreement. Okay. Oops. Yes, I cannot dispute the benefit in that. Oh yeah, just relation change. fight. Okay, what I'm going to do is plunk him. Then what I'm going to do is swap these two around. We can't swap outside of deployment, apparently. Let's fight! Shoot this guy. Huge number of bonuses, which is nice. There you go. Poison on this guy is not going to matter. Could move up for next turn, but I guess it doesn't matter. Chill out over there. Okay. For your family. I think I can keep attacking to here. Battle. Well, I'm a little worried about this unit. Maleers versus range did tend to be pretty good, but this seems okay. I don't think it's units. I don't think units block line of sight. It's not that, like, because the mountain here, for example, is definitely blocking this one, but was never blocking the Markabata. No fear. Some, I, I believe it is true that uh, someone has pointed out that it's just some incomplete tooltips that find different classes of range there. Okay. Siege victorious. Okay. Okay. Unknown feels differently about us. Okay, well, I don't know what to feel about them. Um, so if we go and check out the Greeks over Have here. Have you come to shame yourself once more? My war support is higher. So we're going to have to wind, wind, grind them down a bit. Ooh, what's this? Cultural heritage. Capture the great city of Urkes was a proud day for your empire. Marching through its gates, however, it was clear the defeated citizens were equally proud of their own colorful culture. What do you make of their customs and rights? I call them wrongs. Ah, oh, monoculturalism for stability seems way better than influence. Multiculturalism, that's crazy. That should help simplicity and keep things focused. 
Units can Depending also block line of sight for gunner type units. Go cool. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's both. so gunner type units. So javelin javelineers are gunner type units in that they need a direct unblocked line, as opposed to a sort of more ballistic type unit like our archers. And we do have copper now. Yes, that's huge. So this place is occupied. I don't think we unoccupy it until the war ends. Mutiny. Well, I just got the city. Chill out. Not my responsibility. Okay. I don't want to move him out to the ocean without full movement. So I'll send him out next turn. Where's the stability? 5%. Okay, but it is rising. But yeah. theoretically, if I put units inside... Fit cap is 50 instead of 30. I don't know if that that affects the rate at which it changes. It will evolve by 5%. I think 5% is the speed that stability just changes all the time. You have the current stability and the balance point. So we've changed the balance point from 30 to 50 by having some units in here. Yeah, it's always 5%. That's that's what I thought. So I mean, rest in here for now. Alert and watch. Because you may as well. Blossoming of beliefs. Religious feeling is strong across the empire. That is not preventing discord from merging among the faithful. Great cities are finding themselves under the sway of diverse religious leaders who each see the standard creed with different eyes. New religious orders are emerging every year and their influence is growing. What should you do with these people? Kill them all. Let the gods sort them out. Uh, dissolve. Only one faith. Influence. Or lead. Interesting. Both of these go to fanatical, which... I suspect might change, but it does change how our policies are going to drift. Lead goes more towards tradition on the social axis. Influence goes more towards world on the geopolitical axis. And Dissolve leads more towards order on authority. What do we think? Okay, I thought there was an auto explorer. It's available to toggle under the movement speed number. Okay. Oh yeah, it's toggle, not a button. There it is. Influence, order, lead, dissolve, twitch chat. I'll go influence. Done. Yeah, there it is, right over there. Because I was looking at the buttons. So like, I thought there was an auto explorer. I'm sure I'd used it before. Access to your copper was purchased by the Nubians. Okay. I think they might have, just like, the one curiosity I popped, I feel, might have cleared both. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong about where it was. Imperial power. I think the next tech after this one is the one that gives me the uh, longbows. I'm going to start the Forbidden City. I'm going to pop it in the Thebes area so it gets the stability boost. Um, it will work whatever's underneath it. But I still kind of want it out of the way from other things. I think I'll just put it on one of these food tiles here that kind of in the middle of nowhere. So we can benefit from that. Oh, how are we doing in the fame contest? So, um, apparently the Nubians have more fame. However, it doesn't show what era they're in here, but I'm pretty sure they're one era behind us. Knowledge in a form that is codified. Your empire becomes one of the giants, astride the globe. And what will you do with this power? Get more money from trade. Commons Quarters gives us influence and stability. Ah. And we can relocate our capital. All right. Yeah, it's not loss at sea. It's going to be loss at sea. It's okay. Every time I see that, I'm like, it's loss at sea? No, it's not. Uh, help out with the Forbidden City, please. There you go, War Summons. Five turns, we will get our longbows. 
get rid of these crap ass javelin ears. Help out the Forbidden City, please. Alright, you're fully healed up. Where the hell are the Greeks? I was expecting this to be all Greeky lands over here. We have our orders. Are we getting like ticking war support? I just honor my people by sharing air with you. Yeah, there we go. Their war support is dropping. I think we have to get their war support down to zero, basically, to win this. Like, then they'll they'll be willing to, like, just give up. Alright, well. Here I was. Building a bunch, a bunch of troops. Wait, does it auto-explore in the ocean, and is it going to lose my fleet? I'm hoping the auto-explorer is smart enough not to lose it. I'm going to leave it on. You intrigue me. Let's talk. I'm going to keep being buds, although the Nubians, if they keep winning, we're going to have to go and smack them around. But for now, yeah, we'll get a scientific agreement. Sure. Can we tell at a glance what era they're in, in terms of an era number? Because we're in era three. I mean, they've been Nubians for a while, so I don't think they have, they have changed. Auto Explorer should be clever enough. Dev said that on stream. Cool. <laughs> He's persuaded to defeat the Greeks, convince him to share your currency. A proposal for you. Think on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um... You are as just as you are wise. Let's make it so. That's great. I entertain myself. I mean, maybe we have to go after the Nubians, but if... You know, we, again, it's nice to have a friend. So I think the next thing we do is go after uh, the Gothic Marbazirs. So I'm just going to move in this direction because we've got nothing else to do. Upper right under their culture tells you whatever they are. Are you wine or are you vinegar? Oh, classical era. Okay, it would be nice to have a number. But yeah, classical era is definitely behind medieval, which is what I had assumed. They're getting a lot of stars, like they a lot of fame. I'm wondering, have they gotten a bunch of the these deeds? They got bread and games, that was fairly recently, but that's just 50 fame. How are they getting so much fame? Oh, did they stay in the same era? No, no. So how I know you don't have to advance. But they don't have enough stars either. Like, here's the thing, right? If we look at them, if they transcend, if they if they pick Nubians twice in a row, I'm assuming they would still be in the medieval era. It would say it would say Nubians. Like they could still stay as Nubians when they enter the medieval era. But I think it would still say medieval era over here. And you don't have to advance from classical to medieval. But then in that case, I would assume their stars would be full. So, I feel like the only conclusion I can draw from this is they haven't reached the medieval era at all, and they haven't transcended and kept the same. So they're definitely behind us. They're three stars behind us, right? Because we completed it and got the seven. They're three stars behind us, but have 400 more, 350 more fame than we do. So what else do you get fame from? Competitive deeds. But I mean, I got two. They got one. Oh, they transcended from ancient to classical. Nubians is is is, uh, is ancient. Oh, okay. Okay. So they went Nubian, Nubian. So they are behind us. They didn't transcend from classical to medieval. Okay. So they probably got bonus fame from that. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That explains everything. I don't even know if I want to station you, but well, maybe. Professional soldiers, conscripts. Cheap. Oh, I want combat strength. I mean, that's substantial. Substantially cheaper. Fudge, that's a hell of a lot cheaper. But I feel like... Plus one's not much, but I feel like this is what we want. It does seem logical that people shouldn't have to do a job unless they want to. I'm just going to leave this open so that we can tweak the... Uh, 
this this bar later more than anything else. I don't I know plus one is hardly well I'm I'm a little bit I don't know the combat math in this game. In Civ Six, a, a, a tiny numeric advantage does is significant because of how the math works out. An extra plus one or plus two, and God forbid, like ten points difference. Like, and we're talking about like a unit that's got eighty versus a unit that's got ninety. It's like a god tier difference. So maybe plus one doesn't mean much over here. So some people say plus one is hardly anything, and other people are like plus one's a lot. I think the plus one actually is quite substantial over here. You think plus seven plus ten is already one hit kill? So it's it's it is similar to like Civ Six. I'll have to check the actual combat math. But it, it felt, so far, my feeling was that small differences in numbers actually do make a big difference because of how the combat rolls work. And we got War Summons, so we should be able to level these guys up. 100 gold a pop, we got tons of money. Yeah. And nice if you could, like, shift-click and upgrade, like, everyone of a type. Civ 4 had some great things for that, you know, for upgrading all the units in an army, or in fact, upgrading all copies of that unit everywhere in your empire. But Civ 4 had more units, so it was more of an important thing. Night raids. I th I'll probably just end up grabbing some of the cheaper stuff again, just to keep things going. Wow, craftsmanship's really not going to give us much without the iron and the copper. Oh, siege tactics. We can have bigger armies. That's actually really valuable. Can multi-select, but it still means click, 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 then click, right? Um, it would be ideal, like here, if you could just shift-click this button to upgrade all upgradable units in this army. Or, like, alt-click or something to upgrade all javelineers in your entire empire to longbows. Which would not be a very big UI ask. Right? Check for modifier, and then if so, just loop through everything. Up. And in, if you don't have enough money, just have it prioritized. It upgrades this unit first, then up units in this army, then starts upgrading units in other armies until you run out of cash. So we did lose that ship. No, it's here. No. It keeps popping up like unit lost at sea, but it's unit could be lost at sea if you don't do anything, but we're going to keep showing you this like really scary warning over and over. We still have the boat. We've never lost it. Not Yay! only was it the palace for two dynasties and 14 emperors, the Forbidden City was rumored to contain 9,999 rooms. Uh, let's just claim Angkor Wat, just because we can. And screw everyone else. It's the opposite of Civ. I have a proposal. Yeah, we can trade everything. In Civ, I'm like, wonders are dumb. They're a waste of time. They just detract from war. And here I'm like, no, I'm going to take all of it. Uh, let's get some copper. Actually, I forgot that we'd like opened up new um, new trading partners over here. God, that's expensive. Does it go up for every resource you got? Because that's what I'm thinking, is it probably scales in cost per wonders you've per... Oh no, this one's really cheap. Why is pearl so expensive? Just because pearls are so expensive? I guess that's legitimate. Pearl's more expensive than salt. I nice said the tooltip here gave you a breakdown. I mean, part of the, the, the distance, some people say the further away it's more expensive. Well, I assume that's the transportation price. But the base price being higher must just be pearls are expensive. It's your only copy. Maybe. I don't know. I bought her, la her both her salts. They were cheap. Um, this does work all the tiles, right? Be nice if we had, like, yeah, double, double resource tiles, so we'll get both value out of it. Not that it means much. Here, I'm just gonna build it here, and we'll have everyone just power through the wonder. And yeah, I was going to say, I don't think you lose access to the supply. Because we hooked up something. We hooked up the copper, and immediately someone tr was trading our copper. And it's like, it's fine. It's super low stress. Trading is wonderful. You don't lose access to the resources. So you're, you're, that's why there's no confirmation. You don't, 
get to say yes or no whether someone trades your thing. Speak, because it's... fool! Pollute my mind with your vile chatter. How you doing? Eight? I think we get. I think we get a notice when like when they drop to zero. Merchant from afar. Bang, bang, bang. Traders. Strange wares. Hail from afar. Claim to offer merchandise will be profitable. Look, Haggard is awesome. We can dismiss them towards homeland or consent. They'll probably bring the plague. But let's do it for science. There you go. Heavy infantry gives us yet another slot in each army. Very valuable. I do know you need to sue for peace, but I think we get a note about it. I would rather spit at your feet. I hope, okay. anyway. So theoretically, it'll be next turn. And then, yeah, we'll go after the uh, the Goths here. Got a lot of units. I'm happy we're friends. There you go. Close to victory. About to lose their war support. Force surrender. So, give Urkis is automatic because it's a war goal. It's what I decided the war on, so I have to take that. Now, Sipar would cost nothing, but it's not occupied, so I can't hit it. Or these. I can't vassalize because I don't have enough war score or whatever. Oh, dang, the regions are literally all stars. So we're just going to take Urkis. Right, and then whatever is um, left out of this, they give me they give us money. Take outposts. I don't... I can't... There's nothing else I can click. I don't think I'm missing it. I think there's literally nothing else I can click. I can click this, but they won't do it. Yeah, we have to occupy to take, and they're somewhere else. No, we'll just we'll just peace out. I can tell you that our gratitude is boundless. Trophy. Win a war without losing any units. Can I say you <laughs> can tell you my gratitude is boundless? It's like, oh, you're giving me a city. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. At least we know where they are now. I don't know how the Greeks came over here, but it was annoying. I was going to take that territory, and they just, like, ninja it off me. It was very rude of them. So... We've been really cool with these guys so far, right? When we've so had... So tell me, how are you today? Can we... If we want to go to... I guess we can always just surprise war. Oh yeah, traitor badge! Yeah! Well, having this badge, its owner gains some war support when destroying an enemy district based on the level of the badge. Yeah. I think... I think in the game there's... Like... There's only one traitor badge, so whoever's the late, latest person to do a traitorous action has it. So we'll just have to wait for some grievances to brew, hopefully, maybe. I don't know. All right, so this place over here. Yeah, nothing to link. Um, I would like to build a harbor, but what, uh, I've got a bunch of money. I guess we can use that to accelerate things. Okay, I'll build that there. I'll purchase this. I'm going to get a ship from over here, too. Oh, it doesn't have the population. Okay. Well, let's... Wow, it doesn't have any population. I wonder if I should disband someone. Its food's pretty good, actually. It's going to grow fast. Stability's growing quickly, because it's tiny. Yeah, that's faith one. No, I don't know what people are responding to. Well, stability isn't great here, but it's growing to it's going to a hundred. Yeah, I think we'll. Um, I mean, I was happy about this. Yeah, we can build the stronghold, which wouldn't be bad because it does exploit the food on it, and then we could build more farmers quarters around it to make sure it continues to grow super quick. Build the ship when you get the pop. Yeah. I think we will build a ship pretty quickly. I don't... No. So this warrior has no veterancy. 
It's at level zero. I think I actually will go and um, disband it. What we could do is disband him and then start, maybe after the stronghold, queue up a ship. They do the agrarian ability. Right. That's true. Wait. Triggers a migration to territory adjacent to the selected city. Its population will increase, but its neighboring empire will gain a grievance against you. That's insane! That's insanely cool! Alright, we'll put this one on city growth for now. Food and production. That seems to make a lot of sense. Nubians forgave a grievance immediately. Stole population. They're like, no, it's cool. We're bros. Oh! Holy crap. Okay, I gotta pay attention to these buttons a lot more. That's nuts. Cancel this. I want to buy the boat right away because I'm curious about things. Then, yeah, do go and build the stronghold. I think that's going to be quite cool. And actually, I'm going to spend the money on the Five stronghold. Five farmers' quarters for one city. Lots of food. Somebody is going down in history with the title of the Satiated. I really have five farmers' quarters in the city. So, districts don't show up under completed. Do they show up somewhere else? I don't know. Now, I could consider building more farming quarters just to keep the food up a lot, but there's a... Science. You know, I have actually a lot of room for actual farmers. I have a district map button. I believe you. Help me out here. Where are my districts? Cool to say shaded sounds pretty backhanded. <laughs> bottom next to the filters. The bottom down here. small button bottom right okay tile output hex grid oh okay all right it doesn't okay that makes sense it wasn't it's really not obvious that it's the show me the districts but that is actually an excellent very useful view that is a really good and useful view. I like that. I still don't know what to build in the city right now, though. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to just get a bunch of this, like, basic infrastructure down. But I was still wondering about a count. Like, it told me it had five farmers districts in the same city. I mean, so, it looks like we've got two actual farmers quarters. The stronghold, which is apparently counting as it. Maybe the harbor sort of counts at it because it exploits food. I don't know where the fifth is. So I'm willing to say farmer, farmer, harbor, stronghold is four. What's the fifth? The city itself? Because the city exploits food. All right. I dig that. That makes sense. Your production does kind of suck over here. I'm going to queue up a maker's quarters. Actually, we can actually get a good set of them over there. Now, the next question I had is, can I hit this button anywhere else? No, it's a global cooldown. I was all excited about hitting that button everywhere. But apparently that's not a possibility. So... Is there some shenanigans I can do? I might leave these uh, district view on, actually. Are there some shenanigans I can do to get them to generate grievances against me? 
I mean, certainly I can generate grievances against them, especially if I start ninjing the population. But I don't know. Evil shenanigans, exactly. Best kind of shenanigans. Oh! Tier 3 belief for Egyptian polytheism. Um, develop the intellect. Uh, science per alliance. We have an alliance. Just flat out industry on all main plaza is really good. War support when someone demands our uh, things. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, is that flat out all my units move faster and they're cheaper Arkin's pretty good and that would be some money I can see how this could also be very useful patronage for trade plus two money per number of trade routes on city or outpost Yeah, that could definitely add up to a lot. After you select your tenant, but before you conform it, there's a drop-down menu above your holy site. You can change it. We have we did take a look at that. We decided to keep the obelisks, but thank you for the reminder. Don't spell honor kin because they spelled it wrong. Why? Because there's no U? Patronage gives an effect when you have four research. Yeah, but I thought... I do remember seeing that, but I thought patronage was a technology as opposed to mandate patronage. Is this really something different? Well, let's go ahead and hit this, and then we'll see you next time we're in the trade thing. But yeah, we can choose our uh, the look of our temple, but I'm going to keep these obelisks. I know we're English now, but turns out there's no English style. Yeah, I don't think this is the patronage that gives the boost, but the money might still be really useful. Because yeah, if we open up so our buddies over here eyes. and take a look at the trade and look for gemstones... Uh, hold on. I guess it's in the tooltip over here. Yeah, it's research the patronage technology, which is different from the religion thing. Uh, no known path. Nothing. Pearls, but those are really expensive. Oh, see, these pearls are a lot cheaper. So the base price is not just that pearls are really expensive. I guess more horses would give us more food everywhere. And they're cheap. Is my money shown on my screen? I mean, that's... Oh, yeah, so I've got 200 left. Okay. Alright, Mr. Boat. I'm going on to explore. I have a proposal. I'm going to be cool with the uh, the Persians over here. I must consider this. Because we're going to be focusing on the Goths short term. Even if we have to surprise war them, although maybe that won't do good for things for our reputation. The site of Angkor Wat is worthy of reverence. Not merely for the temples, I can't... but for the care... Oh, I could claim Todaji as well. Irrigation. I mean, frick it, I may as well. We get fame for every single one. And I want to live forever. <laughs> Here, we'll build it um, in. Uh... Yeah, we'll build it for this area this time. So everyone gets a wonder. Oh, we can build the Obelisk of the God as well, an extra holy site. But let's just power through the wonder first. What is this? Oh, those merchants that we let in! Excellent, we're going to turn a profit. Hooray! And a new civic for press freedom. But what about the lion press? That's the press for giant cats. This is a really weird reference to Lugan press in World War II and Hitler and fake news. <laughs> lion press. Because it's their lion. <laughs> hey, lion press is better than Fox News is all I'm going to say. Um, freedom of speech makes it cheaper to cancel and enact civics. Propaganda prevents empire revolutions. I don't know what an empire revolution is, but it sounds like the sort of thing we might want to avoid. So, we'll do that. Hey, I don't know why I always get compliments on this hoodie. This is, this is a Divinity Original Sin 2 hoodie that the developers sent me. It's really thick, but it's, it feels very luxurious. It's got the great pattern. It's got a cool hood. Makes me look like a wizard. 
hard it's hard to play video games this way but you know <laughs> and it, it's an amazing video game i don't know i'm just gonna go for propaganda free speech is obviously overrated any sort of garbage who's to know what the truth is <laughs> who's to know what the truth is i do i know what the truth is and i'm gonna tell everyone what it is and that's the way we're gonna run our empire Um, I guess the AI must be doing something big here. There we go. Maybe infantry research. Nice, which, yeah, adds more slots to our armies. Oh. Uh, maybe we just go for foreign outposts for a little bit. Actually, we might want to do this because right now we're at our city cap because we just added a new city. We got a science star. That's really good. What's our trait here? Agrarian. Oh yeah, agrarian population. Which we're about to get a star from that. Beeline say, you know, that's not a bad point, because I'm assuming we could go into the oceans and stuff at that point. Sailing. Seafaring mastery? Whatever Wait. you intend to produce. With 15 makers' quarters, I guarantee there will be a lot of it. Okay, Caravel ignores deep water. Cog does not. So it seems to me that if we want to explore the oceans, what we have to do is beeline three masted ships, which is in the next era. So, I mean, seafaring mastery will get us there. Which is, I mean, kind of fine. Cog can stay out longer? Oh, okay, you can spend more times at sea? It's not explained anywhere. Oh! Skilled Navigator refused less damage consecutive turns spent in deep water. Yeah, okay. So, I, I don't know if I'll start beelining it quite yet. I'll pick up some of these I cheap have things. A proposal. Share maps. That sounds great! Nice to have friends. Agrarian star unlocked. Nice. Well, help with the wonder. Why not? Or an outposts. Hawks on the wind! <gasps> Everyone, quarantine. Wear masks. And while the citizens worry less about the horrors of war, others' fears prey on their minds. Citizens are afraid. The city square is rife with hearsay. Rumor across the land speak of a terrible malady laying entire communities to waste. The sufferers bloodied and bedridden. What will we do? We can heed these warnings. Go into lockdown. Uh, lockdown on four cities for ten turns. Hurts st improves stability. Hurts industry. Or we can ignore our chance of bad consequences. No way, man. Da -da -da. That isn't some of that lion press. I mean, so we can go to seafaring mastery right now, but I'm not. I don't think I'm. I'm too concerned about rushing it quite yet. Crop rotation. Oh, that's a lot more food. Colony model. Create a city with a small package of infrastructure already built. Oh, so presumably if we build a new city, it's going to pop with more stuff right away. All right, let's get feudalism. It won't be futile. Doraiji was the largest wood structure in the world for 1,200 years, more or less. That should impress anyone. <laughs> I really like this narrator. He's so snarky a I lot of times. I have a proposition for you. Um, I am going to refuse a non-aggression pact with the guy I'm thinking about attacking. This is what we call a pro move in gamer circles. There's just no way to make this work. I do not accept. Crisis. Oh, what if it was broken? Very well. Oh, they forgave a grievance. Oh, because I, I refuse the treaty. So wait, if I go and start making ridiculous demands and he declines no, his war support's a lot higher than my war support call some traitor hmm well let's get our new holy site that does not work any of the tiles so we'll just slap it somewhere on like a really old, lowly yield tile like this one over here but we may as well have all our religious buildings. Let's get a stronghold going. Ditto. Oh, 
I mean, you know, I'm 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 sort of trusting the system is highlighting, you know, properly useful tiles, but I don't know. I go expert policy. Oh, no, no, you still need the uh, production boost because your production kind of sucks, um, which might incentivize more of these makers' quarters that just give some flat basic benefits. I think that's not a terrible idea. Or um, what are we working here? Forests. Well, I mean, at least one forest. So let's get a lumber yard. Forest. Okay, so that'll give a little bit of production. Yeah, that's just for adjacency. And then we get the mountains. So let's do this, and then what we can do is get the stoneworks, which will give us more production on mountain tiles. So that should turn out to be fairly useful. And yeah, we're working mountains now, you're right. So getting that will be handy. So we can get more of these. Food's not bad. Unique units or er, districts are cool. It, and it gives stability. It gives us the food and it gives us stability. Yeah, we, we probably want to build all the strongholds we can. Because that's kind of nice. Because it's the... Like, it's effectively a 15 point gain in stability. Because districts normally cost 10, I think. And this gives us 5. So it's a 15 point difference for a district that still benefits us. In multiple different ways, which is really nice. Attacking Hattusa might be exceptionally difficult, because they are kind of on pretty high ground. Maybe what we should do is shift our initial attention to Nessa. That might be better. Also, um, where's our other army? Yeah, I was going to say, at some point they just got, like, slept over here, which is no good. Get your butt over here. Well, folks, it is 4 p.m. We've been streaming for four hours. I've been having a lovely time doing it. Um, it's actually taken my mind off some things that are very, very much stressing me out right now. That's a okay, sick family member. Um, so that was very nice. Thank you very much, um, for that. Put your stronghold in your Hattusa is not bad advice. Um, uh, next live stream's on Monday. Monday should be Motorsport Manager. Uh, next Wednesday is probably more Humankind. I believe Humankind comes out on the 17th, which is Tuesday. Which you guys should have... Oh, upgrade the warrior now they have iron. That's a good point. Hang on. Let's do that. First of all, this swordsman could be upgraded if I had even more iron. Where's the other... Uh... Right over here. Oh, no. I still I still can't. Oh, he wants to upgrade all the way to the great swordsman. Because it needs two iron. So I have one iron. I need two to upgrade to great swordsman. And apparently I, I, I'm the swordsman upgrade is no longer available. So, womp womp. That sucks. Um... So, yeah, uh, next Wednesday should be more Humankind. Again, it sh this should come out on Tuesday, so then you guys will get to play it, which is great too. And hopefully, avatar sharing and whatnot will be enabled on Wednesday for the next stream, so we can do drops and stuff like that. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, we're going to go raid a kiss for luck, and I'm going to see you guys in two days. So watching the VOD, we plan to play some Slay the Spire. Still plan to... Uh, hopefully, I want to play... Yeah, I want to play some more Slay the Spire soon. Actually, I almost did some just for YouTube the other day. So... Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Bye. Ready to kiss for luck. Give her some love.